So I recently did a video about the Freedom Phone and how I think at best it's a crappy overpriced China phone meant for conservative consumers who want to think that they're saving America, but can't into installing custom ROMs themselves. And at worst, it's a fed honeypot that's designed to keep closer track on those American conservatives, specifically the ones that are more aware of big tech and are trying to take some steps to avoid it and remove it from their lives because of course these days, social media and the other arms of big tech are the primary methods that are used for disseminating controlled opposition and misinformation. And at the end of it, some of you were curious, what is a good alternative to Android phones when the Librem 5 phones are too expensive and the Freedom phones are garbage and the Pine phones still aren't packing the latest and greatest hardware in them and might be a bit tricky to use if you're not super familiar with Linux? Well, I have a solution for you. Although it will require you to still root your phone yourself and install a custom ROM yourself. So you gotta be a little bit big brain for this option. But maybe in a later video, I'll actually do a step-by-step -step guide on how to do that. But the ROM that you're looking for is Calyx OS. Now, of course, this is still Android. It's not its own OS like what Pine phones have or what Freedom phones claim to have. But at its core, Android is actually pretty damn cool because it is open source. Now you see, Android is basically just a modified Linux kernel made for mobile devices combined with some other open source software. But one of the consequences of this open source software is that if it's really good, a corporation might want to extend it. And if it's not completely GPL, as is the case with uh, Android being mostly under the Apache license, the corporation doesn't have to open source the extensions that they made to the software uh, and can basically fork their own version that is proprietary. And this is where we are with modern Android. The vast majority of the software on it, like Google Maps, Calendar, Gmail, and the Play Store, are closed source apps and this is just stock Android. Don't even get me started about all of the bloatware that companies like Samsung will add to their phones after the fact. Uh, and naturally, the closed source software is used to do bad things to its users. And this is the case with Google. It uses its closed source uh, software to spy on you um, with any phone that is using their software, constantly sending them data. And this is where Calyx comes in. So instead of having Android with Google services built on top of it, Calyx uses Android with Micro G, which is a free as in freedom re-implementation of Google's proprietary Android user space, apps, and libraries. Now it gets around Google's tracking by creating an anonymous unique identifier that lets you register your Android device with Google so you can still use their apps that depend on their services like YouTube, Google Maps, and Uber, but it doesn't let Google trace any of that app activity back to you. There's also several applications that come pre-installed with Calyx OS uh, that may be useful for increasing your privacy. These might be apps that uh, you may be using already. Uh, but for example, it comes with Datura Firewall, which gives you app-specific control over what is allowed network access. It also comes with free VPNs from the Calyx Institute and Rise Up pre-installed and you get Orbot for routing your traffic through Tor. You also get access to the Aurora Store and F-Droid. Now I've done videos in the past about F-Droid, uh, but TLDR, it has a whole bunch of awesome software in it that's not available in the Play Store. So you should really check it out. You can even install it on your Android phone that you have right now. It doesn't require root or anything like that. Uh, but Aurora allows you to download any free, as in price, Play Store app without giving Google any of your data. And there's also some plans in play to try to get paid apps working with it as well, but right now, those don't work. It's just free, as in price apps. And there's also replacements for other apps that uh, misuse your data, like Google Drive, for example. This is replaced with Seed Vault, which lets you backup files to Nextcloud or to a local USB. Google Maps is replaced with OpenStreetMaps. 
Gmail is replaced with K9 and Google Chrome is replaced with Chromium using DuckDuckGo as the default search engine. There's also a dialer installed on Calyx OS that makes it so that whenever you try to send text messages or make calls, it's going to prefer to use the Signal Messenger for those actions so that all of those calls and messages are sent end-to-end -end encrypted by a relatively trusted messaging app, at least one that's much more trustworthy than the Zucks WhatsApp. Calyx OS also provides very extensive and easy to use privacy features that allow you to see what apps are trying to access what and then control whether or not they can access those things. There's sensitive numbers privacy. So say if you're in a situation where you need to call an emergency number, uh, maybe an abuse hotline or the police, but you don't want it to show up on the call logs for fear of somebody seeing it, maybe somebody living with you. Uh, there's also, uh, there are automatically no recordings of those call logs. And there's also a panic button feature that can be set to do a number of different things from deleting messages or apps, or even factory resetting your device. Now at this point, you're probably wondering, are there any downsides to using this ROM? You know, what is the but? Um, there are a couple of things. Now, despite how awesome MicroG is for letting you use Google services without Google really using you, there are still some features of apps that you cannot use without being signed into your real Google account. So for example, you can't quickly select past routes on Google Maps without being signed into an account, and you can't watch certain videos on YouTube without being signed into a Google account uh, that is age verified. And now these days they're requiring your driver's license or a credit card in some regions to do that. Another downside to Calyx OS and also other really secure private uh, Android ROMs like Graphene is that it's only supported on Google Pixel phones. So if you are really anti-Google and you don't want to give them any data or money, you are going to at least have to fork up some cash for the hardware. Uh, maybe you can get it secondhand, so maybe that's a way that you can personally mitigate that problem. Now, to be honest, the real reason that you have to do this is because Android phones, other than the Pixel, can really be a pain in the ass to root and then use as a daily driver in a secure way because they often don't have unlockable bootloaders. Yes, I'm talking about you, Samsung. I mean, seriously, your Note line could literally be the best Android phones on the market if they were easy to unlock, root, and then install custom ROMs onto and relock the bootloader. And since Samsung didn't even make a Note this year, I'm probably just going to end up switching to a Pixel and then installing Graphene uh, and probably Calyx OS as well on it and then test driving each of them uh, for a while so that I can detect which ROM is best for me. It's probably going to end up being Calyx just because with Graphene, there's very, very few apps that you're actually able to use. And at the end of the day, I think that the main key to privacy and security is just to practice good OPSEC. So I think pairing that with Calyx OS uh, might be the best solution for me. Um, and I will do that just as soon as new pixels actually become available in my area so that I can buy it for cash. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like the video and share it. And as always, have a great day.